I was thinking, you know, um, life is busy, life is full, I, I don't need this. And so I pushed that away. And as you know, once God plants something in you and he wants you to do it, it is not going to go away. So it came to a, it came to a point like maybe um, three, four years, three, about three, three years later that the, the calling got so loud that I couldn't push it aside. And that's when I told my husband, I got to seriously pursue it or I, otherwise it's going to drive me nuts. <laughs> you know, so uneasy, the feeling that, that Jenny, I called you to do this. Why are you not doing it? So I did it. I went straight into a year long coach training program. I did it virtually because the school is in Australia. Um, I planned to start my business then in 2020. I didn't know what was going going to hit us in 2020 pandemic hit us and i asked god so what now you know do i pause it um and i decided okay you know i've, I've put it off for so long so let's not pause it anymore so i went ahead started my business uh it was all online coaching and i'm happy to say this is the second year now and i'm still growing my business so i will pause there <laughs> Oh, bless you. You know, it is so refreshing when I meet other women that are doing this um, line of business in the marketplace for Christ because we so need that. And a lot of times I remember when I first started coaching, I was told that I needed to not mention Christ in my business or I wouldn't get a lot of clients. And at that point, I just felt frustrated and was like, maybe this isn't what I should be doing. So for six years, I wrestled with how my business should go and in 2020 it was like a lightning bulb just a light bulb went off and it just struck me that no you have to do this for christ this is who you are this is what you believe this is what you stand for and the rest is history and i've been meeting great women like yourself in this marketplace and know that there is a market for it and so let's talk about that let's talk about the need for women that are christians in your line of work and, and what that call looks like. Yes, um, I, I do coach uh, women from all walks of faith. I don't uh, exclude it, but naturally, you know, if a Christian believer comes in, um, I will start the coaching session with a prayer and end it with a prayer because, you know, that's that's how we're comfortable with. But for those who are from different walks of faith or who are agnostic, I, I don't do that. So coaching is actually meeting where the client is. So we cater to what the client needs. And for me, it's to see that person discover her purpose and really reconnecting with that purpose and then from there aligning it with her values as well and then to see what her specific and, and longer term goals are so you know like how you came up with your, your the name of your business and podcast river life coaching was something that was planted in me when i was uh, doing my paper on my coaching process and model so a lot of my peers were coming up with fancy acronyms that sound really nice but that didn't quite resonate with me so i prayed about it and i was getting a bit worried like you know I, i'm not coming up with something for my paper then i reflected and the image of the river came up so i i drew i, I wrote out um, my model based on the river being an analogy of life so our river source is our values and our beliefs and from our river source that's how the river flows so whether your river is flowing smoothly and, and very rich and uh you know enriching the banks and everything around it or is your river actually shallow and, and maybe meandering and maybe blocked? So in a coaching session, when I use this analogy, people are able to reflect back and say that actually my, my river's like going round and round and round and I don't know where it's going. Because ultimately we want the river to flow all yeah. the way to the delta and then eventually to the ocean. And that's your legacy. So I do talk to uh, my clients who are more ready to talk about legacy as well. It's not about planning your death. It's just thinking about What's that impact that you want to leave behind, whether it's professionally, whether it's personally, and what do you want your life to stand for? And I think that's very powerful and you can reflect on that even if you're 18 or 80, it doesn't matter. Yeah, absolutely. Because we're all at a, at a point in our life that we are wondering where to, where to go or what to do next. And that's how, you know, the river can be flowing upstream and it can be a great current or it can just be calm and peaceful and steady. And, and that's at times when things are good, but then sometimes it can be rushing yes. and, and, and flooding. And, and at those times we are at an encompass in our life where we feel 
Like, what do we do or where do we go? And it's good that we can have people like you that we can look to that can help us to find out how to get that river to flow smoothly again. So that's a beautiful analogy. I really, really like that a lot. Thanks. Um, Thanks. When you say you meet women where they are, I totally agree with that. A lot of people don't understand what that means. They think that in order to start a business or to start anything, they have to be at a certain stage in their life. Can you explain meeting them where they where they're at? Can you explain what that looks okay. like? Sure. Uh, but I'll, uh, Tonika, I'll take a step back because I realized the importance of drawing out the difference between counseling therapy, coaching, and mentoring, right? So counseling is where you have an emotional hurt or trauma and you're seeing a counselor to get to the root cause of it. So there's a lot of exploration to your childhood or to that event, painful. Uh, you dig deep down. And then once you know the root cause, that's when the counselor helps you heal right? So coaching, we may spend time going back to what caused your anxiety or depression, but because we know you are also seeing a, a counsellor. So it's good that if you engage a coach or a counsellor, let both sides know because they're both helping you, Tonika, to tell the counsellor that I'm seeing a coach, tell the coach you're seeing a counsellor because at the end of the day, the issues that you bring to both parties have overlap because ultimately, mm -hmm. Tonika, it's you as the person right? It's one person with, you know, uh, different aspects. So coaching is where we recognize uh, where you're at. So that's meeting you where you're at and also charting where you want to be. So it's getting from good to better. So a counselor may help you get to a good place, but from there you're like, okay, so I'm in a good place, fairly balanced, but what's next? So that's when a coach comes in to help you go forward. Yeah. So like you said, if someone's thinking of starting a business, it's like, oh, it's so overwhelming. A coach comes in and say, well, for me, that is, uh, what, what is the purpose of your business? Why do you want to do it? Is it because your mom wants you to do it? You know, it, it, as long there's no right or wrong, just at least you understand, oh, I want to do this, you know, so that I can show my mom that that she, her business that she wanted to run, she couldn't run it, so I'm running it. But, you know, as long as you reconnect with why, if you just want to do it saying that, oh, I want to prove to the world that I'm capable of something, fine. Because once you reconnect to your purpose, then you can plan from there what are the small steps that you want to take. So a coach helps you plan that small step to, okay, what's that one thing you can do? Is it talking to a friend to say, I need a website built, so can you help me? You know, your friend who's a website designer. So it's just one small step. And then mentoring is when you are reaching out. Just say, for example, a, a younger lady reaches out to you, Tonika, and say, wow, you started a business. Can you be my mentor? So Tonika, you will be sharing your wisdom, your knowledge, almost advising. So the, the, the position is like you are here, we're higher up, and, and the mentee is here. But whereas for a coach and a client, we are both equal. We are both equal in the sense that I don't give advice. I offer observation and perspectives. And sometimes I listen to what's not said and pointed out. I'm more like your accountability, part accountability partner, support, uh, sounding board. Some, sometimes people use me to say, I can tell this. I cannot tell this to anyone because if my team hears this, because I coach women who are managers as well. If my team hears this, they're going to say, I'm not confident. I'm not a leader. So I'm using you. I'm going to use you to pitch my ideas and all that. And it's a safe space. That's the beautiful part of it because I'm not in your lives. People feel that, oh, it's safe to tell this to a coach because you know Jenny's objective, Jenny's non-judgmental, mm -hmm. and I can really feel that I'm being listened to and understood. A lot of times we are heard, perhaps. You know, if we're lucky, we're heard. But then the other person who's hearing you is waiting to jump in to say, okay, I've got to say this, you know. And, and it's not so much to listen to understand. So for coaches like you and me, we listen to understand where the client is coming from, where you are coming from. I thank you for sharing that because I don't think a lot of times people understand the difference between a coach and a counselor. And like you said, it's an accountability person. It's someone that's going to say, I hear what you're saying. I'm listening to what you're saying. And this is what I'm hearing. And you give them that feedback based off of what you heard, not based off of how you want to counsel them on them, but just giving them those words back. And when they hear it, they're able to invest and understand, okay, I did say that, and this is what I can take from what I'm saying. Because a lot of times we think we're saying one thing in our head, but then 
when it's translated coming from someone that's actually hearing and listening, it's totally different than what we tried to get across. And so that's the thing I love about coaching is you are not there to judge. You are not there to look at faults or anything in that aspect, but just to help perspective. And so that's a beautiful thing. When you are first working with a client, what type of people come to you and what are they looking to accomplish? Okay. So usually um, I, I spend quite a lot of time on LinkedIn. I mean, I don't enjoy so much spending time on social media, but that's where um, the, the women who resonate with me uh, come to me. So they, they book a discovery call. A discovery call is about 30 minutes. It's complimentary. There's no obligations to sign on for anything after that. And usually they come in with a particular issue. So I could be posting, let's say, you know, it's International Women's Day, so I'm posting about empowering women. So let's just say someone comes up to me and says, Jenny, I saw your post on International Women's Day. I am a woman leader. I'm struggling with managing my team who are located in different locations. So that's quite specific. She wants to be a more empowering leader, uh, dealing with people from different walks of life. So that's where she's at. So I'll ask her, what's going well, you know, in your role? Because it, you know, if you go straight into a conversation saying what's going bad and it's just the energy, just like you said about energy, right? It just keeps going down. So, so what's going well? And a lot of times we women are so hard on ourselves. We don't take the time, guilty of it myself. We don't take the time to celebrate our successes. So I love the conversation, like what's going well? Then I can see her face light up. She's like, you know, it took me five years to get to where I am. I built a team from two to six different locations in the world. And, and then her face lights up, right? So you're putting, you're making her recognize her successes and all of us have successes, big and small. And then from there, you ask, what is that one thing that if you see improve today could you know start that ripple effect of, of cre creating better results for you or, or you know where you get you to where you want to be and that's where we identify the areas that she needs coaching on and then from there i will share with her what i can help her with and then if it's a good fit we'll take it forward if it's not i still leave her with some tools some reflection because i believe that even if it's just one call even if i manage to add value to her to get her to think it doesn't matter if she doesn't sign with me or she signs with another coach or she completely finds a mentor whatever sometimes you just need to shine that light on that area that needs work and then leave the person to discover how best she can get support and and that's what i've been doing so far absolutely you are definitely a seed planter if someone comes to you and they're at a spot like you just um, said you can plant a seed even if they don't work with you you've added value to that person. And I don't think that a lot of people understand how important it is to just seek a coach just to, for the one-on-one -on -one conversation, just for that discovery call, because they'll find out some new things about themselves that they missed out on. Even if most of the time, I'm going to say this, most of the time, when I very first start working with someone, the first thing they say is, I don't want a coach. <laughs> Yeah, maybe they think it's like, oh, it means something's wrong in my head, yeah, right? So absolutely. it's good that we clarify. I'm not absolutely. saying that counseling, you know, is it, a bad profession or anything. It's beautiful because, you know, the work that counselors do is really to heal, right? But mm -hmm. somehow, you know, people feel like, okay, you know, coach, are you trying to go inside my head? You yes. know, I, I don't want you there <laughs> because yeah. a lot of times we don't want anyone in our heads, the exactly. things that we think about. Yeah. And I think with my name, too, is the mindful coach. So they automatically think I'm trying to get in and pick their brain apart. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not what it is. I just want to see where you are and what I can help you with. And so when they start talking and opening up, then they realize that, oh, I get the difference between the coach and the counseling. And so like you said, I've counseled people or coached people that have been in counseling. And it is two total different worlds, but they do come together. And like you said, they do connect with one another. What do you feel like is the importance of a coach versus a counselor? Like I said, you know, you've, you've healed, right? So you need a counselor to get over a personal trauma. And sometimes the trauma is so deep within you are suffering. So you get a counselor to break free from that bondage. I mean, for us believers, we know that there is that bondage, whether it's it may come from emotional, but then ultimately there's a spiritual bondage. So when you break free from that, then you're free, right? And then you're thinking, oh, okay, but I still feel so overwhelmed. I don't know what's next. So you 
you get a coach to come in and say, yes, now you're in a good place. Let's see where you are in your life, what areas are going well and what areas you want to get better. And, and it's more like, you know, someone to help you along the way. So if you're thinking you're, you're just starting to learn how to cycle, there's always that someone, like my husband will help my daughter cycle, pushing the bicycle along, you know, and up to a point, you go free you know, you cycle on your own. So the coach during this time when you just need some support will be there cycling or holding your bicycle alongside you. The coach is not going to steer your bicycle left or right because then you're going to fall off, right? So ultimately, you're still driving it. You're still deciding on your goals. You're still working out what you want to try. But then it's more like, oh, you know, I remember I told Jenny I'm going to try this. And sometimes they use me really like an accountability partner. And they'll text me, I'm sorry, I didn't have time to do this. And it's not for me to say, huh, you didn't do your homework. You know, no, it's not mm -hmm. that. It's just saying, okay, so, so what happened here? I hear the commitment in our last session that you really want to try out, you know, writing up this business plan and what got in the way. Then we discover it's probably her her desire to be perfect, right? So the perfectionist comes out. If I cannot get a perfect business plan out of paper, I'm paralyzed. I can't do it. So then I coach her. Can you just write five points? Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to implement the five points. What are the five things that you put down on paper? Just do that first. So let's see, the coach will then help you break down something that seems so overwhelming because it's in your mind. But once it's broken down into chunk size, it's doable. And then you, you'll be thinking, oh, what, what held me back in the first place? So that's how I see, you know, the partnering of a counselor and a coach. You get better, but then you may be still a bit shaky, like what's next? A coach comes in to help you really crystallize your what's next. Absolutely. Now, you did explain to me that you are very passionate about women and you do have the strong desire to help women. Have you always felt that way or was it just that fork in the road that turned you to that direction and saying, this is what I want to do now. Well, uh, funny you should ask that. When I did my website, so I'm also a, what I call a recovering perfectionist. I got a guy to help me do the website. And I was doing the website and, and lots of funny things. I usually share this story about you know how, how, how much of a perfectionist I was. I was haggling with him about the font size and the color, the shade, because I like purple, the shade of lilac that I need. And then he's telling me, Oh, actually, the font size that you want is not market standard for websites. You know, my font size, so I was arguing that, right? But at the end of the day, what's that message that I, I want to, to put out to people? So eventually, when the website came out, I showed my husband and he said, it's quite feminine, isn't it? So like you said, is it a plan? Maybe not, but because, you know, it, I'm a woman and very passionate about helping women. Because in my career, in my younger days, I've worked for female bosses. Um I don't know whether it's that period of time because it's been that long, like more than almost 30 years ago, um, that I found the challenges I faced came more from women than my male managers. And I felt quite alone because I didn't have a female mentor and uh, definitely didn't know what was coaching then, you know, so many years ago. So maybe it's my personal experience that I feel that I want to give back. So I do mentoring in, in the Christian, uh, there's a Christian business ministry where I mentor entrepreneurs and professionals. So that's different. So I do wear my mentoring hat and that's not paid. That's actually pro bono. But for coaching, um, I don't select women. I do coach men. But I think it's my life experience when I share to people about my life experience, then they come to me and they, they resonate with, you know, how, how it was. So coaching isn't about me telling my story. It's actually, you know, hearing your story, but then, you know, with my lens and then offering some objective, I'm sorry, observations back. It's not imposing my views on you. So there, there are sometimes a fine line between coaching and mentoring as well, especially mm -hmm. when I'm coaching younger women. So I have to be very careful of that because sometimes they'll say, Jenny, if you were in my shoes, what would you do? So I said that, well, that's my experience. I'm not in your shoes right now. And mind you, this is 20 years later. So your shoes are very different. But still, you know, there are things about self-belief, self-worth, and, and whether, you know, do you really appreciate, again, celebrate your own successes? Absolutely. I believe being a coach is being a cheerleader and being in that person's corner and rooting them on and just letting them know that they can do it. And so it's very refreshing to talk to other women that are encouraging entrepreneurs in Christ that want to do that same thing. And so I commend you for the work that you're doing. How many women do you, um, could you say that you've helped or worked with? Uh, okay, I, I don't, <laughs> maybe that's one, one thing I don't count. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, right, I mean, right now, right, right now, personally, I'm working very closely with four women. Okay. Really, uh, closely because that's that's a longer term program. They they've signed up for like six months. So, those women, four of them, I'm working very closely. Different goals. Um, some are, well, actually, actually, three of them came to me straight off with career goals. But now we're going deeper because uh, Tonika, you know that you know it starts. Maybe they start with one goal, which is career, and then suddenly it opens up. And and one of them I'm having a, a legacy conversation with as well. So it's it's really exciting. So, yes, I, I I'm now currently working with four. But uh, the reason why I pause is because I'm also a freelance coach on two, uh, US digital online coaching platforms. So I think you would know one of them is Better Up. So there, uh, great thing about that is I don't have to do marketing. So you know about business, right? You need to do yeah. marketing. So there, I I just open up my calendar and I'm kind of like a freelance coach. So there, I'm um getting uh getting to coach people from all walks of life, women, men, different industries. And it's amazing. I'm not saying that uh, we are all uh, slotted in one particular box, but it's amazing the things that we go through are quite similar in the sense because we are people. We are sometimes empty. And we find that out of this emptiness, we are struggling. So, I I mean, it, it is in a way reassuring that no matter where your cultural ethnicity uh you know your your privilege in life where is that we all face the same issues um generally like stress all of us face stress insecurity all of us face insecurity to some extent um the lack of belonging that seems to come up you know you want to belong to an organization you want to add value but somehow you feel that you don't belong. So all these things come up and um, I, I find it very rich and I find it that it's a privilege for me to be able to touch their lives at you know this point in time. Absolutely. Well, you've definitely touched my life tonight by just opening up and sharing. Do you work with um, individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis? Do you do group coaching? How does that look? Uh, I do uh, primarily one-to-one. -one. I do have group coaching. Last year during... Um, two times of the year, I opened up group coaching with the team of resilience, building your resilience. I'm thinking of whether to start it again because I think people are really feeling like, oh, when is this all going to end? When is life going to resume to being normal, right? So I, I did group coaching. But my passion is more in one-to-one -one coaching because I believe in that investment of time, both from my client and from myself to put in to really meet you. And a meet means online right now. Uh, even if my clients in Singapore, I haven't really gone to see them in person. So we're still doing online coaching. As, and that's the amazing thing. I can coach you, you can coach me because we have internet. Hopefully internet stays stable. But yes. that's the amazing thing. So I, I coach people on, on Zoom. And um, I do run webinars as well. But most of the time, my webinars are free. So, you know, if you hop onto my website or, or you know, follow me on LinkedIn, that's when I publicize uh, my webinars. So actually, this Friday evening, I'm doing a kind of like an open circle meeting for women to come together and discuss the issues that they face, the biases that they face at the workplace. So that's free. I've so far gotten about 20, 25 people sign up. So that's pretty okay. exciting. And then they're just coming together. I provide this safe space. It's not going to be recorded so i'm not going to publish it anywhere but i think it's in this safe space where a group of women can come together and then discuss the challenges that they face and like what i just shared they may say oh you know so and so in germany is facing the same thing as me in singapore you know about not getting that performance review done properly because or hurt because i'm a woman it's i'm not saying that you know misery loves company but yes that's true yeah. but at the same time you don't feel so alone if someone else seems to be going through the same thing with you yeah yeah i think when you hear other stories again like you said you don't feel alone because you realize that wow i'm not the only one going through something i have a mission in um in um Kampala, uganda and when i was working with some of the women there some of the stories that they would tell and i started speaking with them and, and we practice a lot of mindfulness together and they thought that things were a little different. And I started sharing stories with them and they started to open up. And it was like, okay, so what are stress levels like? And what does depression look like? And these women just started talking. And I mean, it was no different. I go, no matter how far across the continent we are, we share commonalities in raising our children, our marriages, you know, working and just 
being a woman, that's the one commonality that we have that we can relate to and understand that we all carry some type of burden or stress that we need to be able to relieve at some point. And so it's good when you have someone that is, again, God-fearing, that can help you in that way, that can understand and reach you where you're at. You know, it feels good to know you're not alone. So I thank you for sharing your information tonight. I'm going to pop up your links. And if you would just sure. like to um, talk more about how people can connect with you and how they can work with you and get, again, with um, your workshop that you've got coming up, if you want to go ahead and tell them about that again, because I think that's something that's very important that women will definitely get a lot out of. Okay. Okay. Thanks. My website is River Life Coaching, as you've popped in there. I'm also on LinkedIn, Facebook, and uh, Instagram. So you feel free to connect with me on, on any one of the social media. If you want to come and speak to me directly, there's a link, uh, book your appointment on, on the website itself, and that will automatically bring you to my calendar. It's 30 minutes. It's set in Singapore time, but normally Kalendi will switch it to US time or wherever you are, and then you can uh, work out. If you really need to speak to me and you can't find a time drop me an email there's also a contact me box there just drop me an email and and normally you know i will circle back and, and work something out because now we are all kind of like still stuck at home so there's quite a lot of flexibility there and for, for more information about that open circle there's there's post on my linkedin so once you're connecting with me on link, linkedin you can see the post i not sure whether it's workable for us time because it's 6 p.m my time which i think is 5 a.m eastern standard that time so it may not be workable but if you uh, if any of your listeners are interested in discussing more about how to be an empowered uh, woman you know feel free to reach out to me I'm also passionate about helping introverts uh, because I'm an introvert and in the, my younger days everyone said Jenny you're so shy how can you be a lawyer and I faced quite a lot of challenges there and introversion is not about shyness so Tonika if down the road you want me to come back to talk about introversion happy to do that uh, but I really like the idea of you putting yourself out as a mindful coach because a lot of time the noise in our head is so overwhelming our inner judge and critic and just be just being mindful just to recognize that the thoughts are not who I am they are not really who I am they're just the voices that probably from upbringing or experiences or, you know, someone told you, you know, you're so shy and it's stuck. And all throughout the time, you know, it just keeps telling you that. So being mindful is recognizing that thought, letting it go, freeing yourself up, you know, and truly appreciating the present moment. A lot of times, you know, when we're working from home and everyone's all around us, work, family, your dog, <laughs> everything else. And it's like, how can you be truly present? So being mindful is really being connected to that present moment. And you find that when your mind quietens down, that's that's when the magic happens. That's when you realize who you truly are. Absolutely. Being in the present moment and being at peace with that, whatever that moment may be. And I think a lot of times we get so caught up in our everyday, what do we have to do next routine that we don't take the time out to be mindful of who we are and where we are at that point in our life. So thank you for sharing and bringing that up. Um, it's so funny because everybody seems to think I'm an extrovert and I'm like, just, I have this big personality, but truthfully I'm, I'm introverted, but I know how to step out of that. And I had to learn that because I'm an only child. And so I had to learn how to play by myself. Sometimes I had to learn how to be creative and do things. And so I'm fine being alone, but I'm okay in crowds as well. And so I, I can adapt to different situations. But sometimes just being able to have that peaceful time of quiet, to just be able to be with yourself. We don't often get that mm -hmm. as women because we've got so many things going on. And so a lot of us may be extroverted, but we invert because it's a safe place. Yes. And, and you know, you need to recharge your energy. For introverts, we need that me time, reflective time to recharge your energy before you put yourself out in the world and before you start serving people and, and you know, everyone has demands on you. You need to like, okay, hang on. I need to go back to my shell because I need to charge my batteries before I come yes. out again. Yeah. Yes. I think about that. I think about Jesus. I go, I can't imagine because being in ministry now, 
I'm like, there's so much that goes on that I go, I couldn't imagine being him. And I see why he would flee from crowds. <laughs> yes, that's it, it why can he a lot. his quiet time, right? <laughs> yeah, amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. So before you jump off of here, tell us what other than coaching is something that Jenny really finds an interest in that just really moves her and excites her. My kids, my kids. I have three. I have a teenage son. So I'm not saying that uh, having a teenage son is exciting. I think it's very challenging. <laughs> he's 17 this year and he can't see, well, maybe you can see the gray hair on my head, but yeah, uh, he's 17 this year. But it's taught me, my children have taught me a lot about life. And and if you, if you see how kids are, uh, it's amazing the lessons that we can learn from them. So I, I really cherish my time. So I've got two girls as well. I really cherish my time with my son and my daughters because they keep me true. They keep me real. So at times, they're they now in school because it's morning my time. But mm -hmm. if they hear me recording a podcast, my youngest will come, who's 10, she'll come to me and say, Mommy, are you sure what you said was true? Because I don't see you being calm at home all the time. So that that's like a check, right? Like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe that day I was quite short with her. And that is, so they keep me true, and yes. and they keep me authentic, and I and, and I love I love that, and that's the legacy I want to leave behind to show them, my son and my daughters, that you know, uh, you can pursue your purpose. And still, you know, uh, live the life that you want. Because a lot of times when they're asking me, mommy, can you make money out of coaching? You know, is it sustainable? It is, but it takes time. So I want my girls to also, you know, believe that they can pursue their passions. Right now it's cooking. Yeah, this age where they, they say that, mommy, I'm going to open, you know, a cafe, <laughs> things like that. So let's let's see how that goes. But it's, it's just to, to create that empowerment in themselves, you know, that, Let's, let's not say that, oh, that's a silly dream. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. let's, let's just encourage our younger generation to believe that whatever they put their minds to it, they can do it. Yeah, and just so so that's, that's what energizes me on the personal front as well. Absolutely. Well, you know, people are always going to eat, right? So they're <laughs> on to something there. People are going to eat. Yes. They are going to definitely eat. <laughs> if they don't do anything else, they're going to eat. That's how we survive, right? So awesome. Um, was, is there any words of wisdom that you would like to leave with our audience before we jump off of here? I think that since it's in conjunction with International Women's Day and, and women are always, during this time when they're reflective, they, they want to see how much they can give to the community, to the people around them. So it's more like, you know, do, 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 right? What can I do? What goals do I want to achieve? What impact do I want to create? So a reminder for you, me, and everyone else who's listening, when you're doing and doing and doing, remember to love yourself, to come back to yourself and to give yourself that time that downtime to kind of just reflect, enjoy what you've achieved so far. You know, even if it's just, oh, I've hugged my daughter today before she went off to school. That, you know, that's great, right? You had that privilege to do that. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be like, oh, you know, I, I closed that $10 million project. It can be <laughs> as simple as that. And I hugged my daughter today. But it's just being mindful and appreciating that. So I, I want to encourage women, yes, keep doing the good work that you're doing, however you're impacting the community. But remember, you can't serve from an empty cup. So if your cup is running empty, whether it's love, whether it's energy, whether it's rest, whether it's affirmation, you can't serve from an empty cup. So make sure you fill up your cup and then you can pour into other people's cups. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for pouring in to us tonight, Jenny. Thank you. Well, it's tonight, my time. It's 7.41 okay, sure. here, my time. <laughs> yeah, sure. And it's Wednesday, your time. So yes. <laughs> you have a great rest of your day. God bless thank you in all you do. Thank you for taking the time out once again for lending us your voice on Mindful Intentions, Nurture and Drive Your Business. And I know you're being mindful and you are nurturing and driving your business as well as helping others nurture and drive theirs. Thank you. Hang out with Thank me you. for just a second. Anyone who's listening, if you are at a place where you think you might need a coach or you just want to run something past someone, reach out to Jenny, riverlifecoaching.com. She's got a beautiful website. I've checked it out. She's got some awesome resources on there. So go and inquire some things to her and maybe she might be able to help you out. And if it doesn't seem to be something that resonates with you, at least give it a chance because 
we can all use wisdom of others at some point when we don't know which way to go or what way to turn. And I know Jenny is very insightful and she's willing to help you in any way that she can. Remember, as always, you were created with a purpose. So go be great. Thank you for listening. And to all the women out there on this day, be blessed. Not only is this International Women's Day, but this is Women History Month. So women, be mm. brave, be strong, be brilliant. But most of all, most importantly, be you. God bless you and have a good evening. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.